Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. Very excited and proud to introduce uh, my mentor, Mr. Robin Shelton. He's uh, the vice president for the section and uh, the uh, general manager at Seacliff Country Club going to be presenting on Inside the Magic Kingdom, how Disneyland's marketing strategies can improve your club. Mr. Shelton, are you on this morning? Robin? He's there on the audio, and he's on the visual, but... Uh, Okay, he's uh, calling in. Bear with us here uh, for just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. How about now, John? Can you hear me? There you go, Mr. Shelton. Okay. Good morning, Robin. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm sorry. I would uh, I blame it on the phone, but I'm sure it's me and my uh, my issue. So. I'm uh, I'm sorry, but I, I am here. I'm ready to go. Thank you for the kind words and the kind introduction. And you just tell me if uh, when to roll or if we're ready to start. You're ready to go. I'll uh, I'll monitor the question box as uh, as we go. And if uh, if you don't mind, if the questions are relevant, I'll uh, I'll interject. But uh, the floor is yours, Command. Hey, um, interrupt any time. Well, first again, thank you for the kind words. Thanks everybody for for being on this morning. Um, I kind of geek out a little bit on, on marketing strategy. So that's what we're going to spend the time talking about today. And as John alluded to, we're calling this Inside the Magic Kingdom and how Disneyland's marketing strategies can improve your club. And I think that Disneyland takes a, a, a pretty unique approach. I think there's a lot that, that we can learn from them. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that, that we can apply. So I've got uh, 111 slides here, so I'm going to try to go pretty quick. Um, and, and get through everything. So again, thanks for um, being here and let's uh, start going inside the Magic Kingdom. So as we talk about kind of the textbook definitions, right? If you just go into a straight textbook and it says, hey, sales and marketing, right? Sales is the act of selling something or sales is a transaction between two or more parties when the buyer receives tangible goods and or assets in exchange for money. Very textbook, very, very, hey, that's what it is. Uh, and then marketing is the action or business of promoting and selling products or services, right? So that's how we think of it in the, in the, in the textbook side of things. Hey, a sales is a transaction and marketing is, is promotion. And like I said, that's the textbook thing, but I think that, we live in um, the real world. And I think, hey, the real world is, is far different from textbook. And anybody who spent time in a classroom, spent time um, in the education world, has said, hey, there's a far different cry from the textbook side of things to the real world. So I don't see sales as a, as a transactional thing. And I don't see marketing as solely a, a promotion. So I think in the real world, sales, um, sales isn't selling something. Sales is solving a, a person's problem, need, or want. And I think that's something that we really have to get um, and accept and say, hey, that's really what sales is. Sales is, isn't selling something. It's solving a person's problem, need, or want, right? Nobody likes going to a, quote, used car sales because the moment you walk on the lot, they try to sell you something. They don't spend any time um, trying to understand what your problem, need, or want is. And then from a marketing standpoint, right, it said the textbook says that, hey, marketing is promotion. 
And I say that, hey, marketing is anything that communicates and creates interest. Um, so marketing does not have to be a poster. Marketing does not have to be uh, a billboard. Marketing does not have to be a, a mass email. Marketing can be um, how you generate referrals, how you create some type of, of buzz among your client. Marketing can be a picture. It can be um, a story. There are so many things that marketing is, hey, anything that communicates and creates interest, not just a, a promotion. So again, sales is selling, is not selling something. Selling Sales is solving a person's problem, need, or want. And marketing is anything that communicates interest. And as we keep talking in the real world, um, these are my beliefs. Uh, I know we talked about it already, that sales isn't selling something. It's solving a person's problem, need, or want, right? And we can think about this as golf professionals. Most of us don't walk into a lesson and start just spouting out information, right? We try to get to know um, the clients, the students say, hey, what are you looking to improve? Tell me about your golf game, what's working, what's not. We use that information to kind of make that them achieve their goals and solve their problem or want. The second thing that I think is one of my beliefs is that, hey, all things being equal, people do business with people they like. And all things unequal, people still do business with people they like. And we can probably all relate to that of working with a sales rep of, hey, who we really like, or hey, why one person gets a lesson, uh, or why one golf professional gets a lesson over another one. Because, hey, all things unequal, people will still do business with people they like. And hey, again, my, you know, number three is that, hey, people do not buy goods and services. They buy stories, relations, and magic, right? So people are not buying what is the advertisement, the poster, the billboard, the mass email. They're buying, hey, the story, the relations, the magic that goes behind it. And as we keep talking about, hey, what goes on in the real world, I'm going to spend some time talking today to talking about what I call, hey, the product positioning statement. The product positioning statement, we're going to call it for short, hey, the PPS, right? The product positioning statement. And what that product positioning statement does is it says, hey, it's a clear brand statement or it's an identity to describe the good or the service. And that's something that I think, hey, a lot of us can do better. That, hey, whether it's our club, whether it's our instructional business, whether it's a department in a club, hey, do we have a very clear brand statement or product identity that kind of tells who we are? And the product positioning statement doesn't have to be a super formal thing. It doesn't have to follow a set structure. It doesn't have to be a textbook thing. And you can probably tell already, I don't live in the textbook world. And I'm living outside of that, that, hey, people buy stories, relations, and magic. And your product positioning statement tells, hey, who you are. It says, hey, who your identity is. And the purpose of your product positioning statement in the real world basically answers the question, what's our product? What makes it unique? What's our clear identity? And what is the product advantage? And again, it's something I think that, hey, we can do better as golf courses, as country clubs, as individual departments, and as instruction businesses, per se. And I think that great companies use their product positioning statement to really know who they are and have a laser focus and stay focused. Right. And hey, sometimes in the golf world, right, there's different courses, different clubs, and we do whatever sounds like a good idea that comes in. We try to do whatever XYZ club down the street may be doing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but does it fit who you are? Does it give you that laser focus to stay focused on it? Or if you take somebody else's idea, how can you use that idea 
that aligns with your product positioning statement or your brand or your identity. So jumping into the world of Disney, right? The product positioning statement says, hey, it kind of says who you are. It says, hey, who is your brand? It says, what is your identity? And this is Disneyland right here. It says Disney provides unique entertainment for consumers seeking magical experiences and memories. Disney leads the competition by providing every aspect of related products and services to the world and appealing to people of all ages. And the part that I take about away from that is, hey, unique entertainment for magical experiences and memories. And if you really stop and think about that, unique entertainment for magical experiences and memories I don't know anybody that does it better, right? They are, that is who they are. They provide unique entertainment seeking magical experiences and memories that they are laser focused and they use that product positioning statement to determine who they are, how they're going to run their business and how they will continue to run their business. So again, magical experiences and memories in the unique entertainment world. All right, now we talk about the mission statement. The mission statement generally answers, hey, what and how do you do something? All right, so the product positioning statement kind of says, hey, who you are and who your identity is. Your mission statement kind of says what and how you do it. So this is Disney. Right, the mission of the Walt Disney Company is to entertain, inform, and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling, reflecting iconic brands, creative minds, and innovative technologies to make ours the world's premier entertainment company, right? Disney has um, brands underneath them, right? They own ABC as an example, but hey, inspire brands around the globe through unparalleled storytelling, creative minds, and that's, um, I think, evident in what Disneyland is. So let's talk about the world that we live in, our country clubs, our golf courses, our clubs. And let's look at, hey, the marketing, right, of what happens in our club world, right? And I said, hey, the marketing, my belief is, hey, anything that communicates or creates interest. So found this on a club's website. All right, that's a picture that's on a club's website. Found this on a separate club's website here's another club's website picture that was there another club right after their pool obviously a couple lounge chairs another club picture of a pool all right dining room and another club Picture of a clubhouse. Got this picture off the club's website. Have no idea what, what it is. Right? What's a picture of a hallway? They put a picture of a hallway on their club, on their website. And hey, here's a picture of another club's website, their food. And hey, that's what the pictures that are on these clubs' websites, right? If we go back to, right, people don't buy goods and services. They buy stories, relations, and magic. That's what people buy. They don't buy goods and services, right? Marketing, right? Anything that creates interest in a product. Okay, hey, all of these things, like, it's a picture of a building, right? This is a picture of a meeting room. Hey, a much trendier bar, an empty pool, another empty pool, an empty dining room, a building that tells me nothing about the golf course, 
a hallway with some stuffed animal type looking things on the side. Food. But let's talk about Disneyland's Mark. Let's see what Disney's story looks like. Right? And these are photos that are all taken from, from Disney.com, right? So everything that we're looking at last from Disneyland's marketing, all from Disney.com. And one of the things that you notice is that all of their pictures of rides are all with smiling people, right? So any ride that you're going to see is a picture of somebody smiling. And going back to their um, product positioning statement and their brand, right? Their storytelling memories and experiences, right? I don't even know what ride this is, but hey, people smiling, right? The rocket. This is an incredible picture because it appears that they're going fast. But hey, what appears to be a dad and his two children and the kids are smiling. Teacup, same thing, right? Appears to be going fast. People smiling again. Can you imagine this photo without people in it? Just a ride, just a vehicle moving through the Winnie the Pooh ride. That's what a lot of our stuff looks like in the golf and club world, right? We have a dining room that's empty, right? We have a hallway that's empty. We have a meeting room that's empty. Teacups again, people smiling. Right? What's the story behind this picture, right? If I'm a parent, Right, there's a story there. There's a storytelling that's been done. Parent and child happy again, people smiling. The Matterhorn, I come back to again. Can you imagine a picture being taken without people in it? What that would look like? And that's what we do in the golf and club world, right? We show a picture of an empty dining room, a picture of an empty tennis court. But we boast that we have 16 tennis courts. Find me anywhere on Disneyland website where they talk about the number of rides they have, where they talk about the number of restaurants they have. They talk about the hours of operation, right? They talk about the square footage or the number of lands, right? They don't. It's the people, right? They're very clear on what their brand is and the storytelling of the memorable and magical experiences. Right, kids are going to be pumped by this. Right, again, hey, people smiling. Right, there's an experience being had. Star Wars, right, or the Star Tours, right. Right, again, we as an industry, right, show the empty dining room. Right, what if this picture had nobody in it? There's such a difference on, hey, what is being told, right? What is, what is the interest that's being created? There's not a whole lot of interest in an empty dining room. There's not a whole lot of interest in an empty meeting room. Space Mountain, right? Again, people smiling. Same thing, imagine this picture with nobody in it. It's way, way different. Splash Mountain, right? That tells a story. There's an incredible story behind that. It doesn't say, hey, Splash Mountain, you know, is a six minute ride that goes through 30 different um, feet of elevation change. And it goes between a mountain that's made out of whatever special wood is made out of, right? There's a story, there's an emotional piece to it. There's people smiling. All right, more brand photos coming from Disneyland, right? These are more that I think even tell a story. Even better than the other pictures do, right? So again, marketing, right? Stories, relations, and magic, anything that creates interest. Disneyland's talking about storytelling. 
right? What's the story being told behind this picture, right? There's so many things that you can pick up uh, consciously or subconsciously, right? Things that can speak to your emotion or to your rational side of things, right? It appears, hey, it's a young girl, right? Pulling her sister to go somewhere along. And there's other kids running around in kind of their princess type costume um, or princess type outfit. Right, what's the story behind this picture of what happens at Disneyland? Right, families being together. And you'll note, even in this picture with the, the three people that are in the foreground, there's people in the background that are together. Right, what's the storytelling behind this picture, right? Every parent is going to love this, right? Why don't we have this stuff on our images? right, of our clubs, of our instruction business, of, hey, families being together, right? We may say it's a place for families, but this says, hey, we are a place for families. And people are much more visual than auditory, right? Whoever said a picture is worth a thousand words was a vast understatement. Anybody's gonna look at this and be like, that's cool versus, Hey, a place for families. Most all clubs will say, hey, they welcome families. But this says and shows the story that everybody loves being there. How about this young little, little goober, right? There's something in his eyes that just says, hey, exciting. Parents want to see that. Right. Don't be the place that just says, hey, we have a kid's brunch. Hey, we do kids cooking classes. Because anybody can say that. This picture says way more than just, hey, kids are welcome. Hey, you can even use people that are staff in your pictures that just says, hey, it's fun. It's different. People enjoy being there. Right, sisterly bond, that gets people excited. Again, no talk at all about the number of lands, the square footage, the number of tennis courts, right, the size of the clubhouse, who designed the golf course, the number of bunkers, people having fun, drawing on, hey, what's important and what is their product positioning statement, their brand of who they are. Right, this picture I dig, right? This is like a child kind of almost like becoming of age going through himself while the parents are waiting and everybody's smiling again. It's people smiling. Hey, what about older people, right? They can still show that they're having fun. People in the foreground, people in the background, friends, right? Even when it's not families, it's friends and people are smiling. All right, let's talk about dual photos. When I say dual photos, right, we saw the pictures we showed at the beginning were pictures of clubhouses, meeting rooms, bars. Right, and in these photos here, is Disney showing the people or is Disney showing the physical structure? Or are they doing both? Right, what's this showing, right? It's showing people smiling and you catch a little bit of Main Street there. Hey, kids with their ears, kids, young adults, right, outside of Star Wars. If you look to the left of the picture, it looks like it's a 75 minute wait. Nobody cares because, hey, they look happy. Right, what is this picture showing, hey, people smiling? Yeah. Is it showing, hey, the Magic Castle? Yeah. Is it showing, hey, Mickey Mouse? Yeah. The Mickey Mouse ice cream pop? It's showing, hey, the people and their brand, right? So you can show photos that tell a story that doesn't just have to have the building. It doesn't just have to have the meeting room. Hey, another photo, right? It's showing the band, 
and it's also showing, hey, something else that happened at Disneyland, some of the physical structure. Small world in the background, right? The princess, Peter Pan, right? They're showing both people and the structures. Right, this picture they could have just showed just the castle, but hey, they got the castle. People smiling again, right? People having fun. It's not just an empty castle, it's not an empty tennis court, right? It's showing, hey, what they are, right? Memorable uh, experiences and memories. <coughs> right? They could just show the Matterhorn Mountain, but they don't. Right, they show the family together. They show the different generations, right? The pretzel, right? They show um, Mickey, Minnie, but the family togetherness. And there's no reason why, hey, we can't show a golf hole. We can't show part of a club, um, part of a physical structure, but also get the family togetherness. Same thing again, just people having fun. Showing the Magic Castle, right? You can have a great signature hole. You can have a great range. You can have a great dining room. But, hey, could you add some people to it that tells a story that matches your brand? Food and beverage photos. When we started, there was one picture of it looked like it was a chicken or a fish dish on some vegetables. Same type of idea in a basic meal. But yet, hey, we've got people together. We've got people smiling in the foreground, right? Look at the picture in the background. Somebody that looks excited about something in the yellow shirt, right? If you look to the left of the guy who looks like he's smiling in the yellow shirt, you got people that are toasting or saying cheers. And that's a way better story that matches their brand and their identity than, hey, just a picture of a piece of fish or a piece of chicken. You don't need to tell anybody you got three bars at your club. You don't need to tell people the operations that you have, but you can show pictures of people drinking and laughing and the people will get the same story and have the same idea of what's going on. This picture I love. I love this picture because when we started, we showed a picture of a bar. It was an empty bar. Why show a picture of an empty bar when you can show this? Right? When you can get people that are having fun, right? Understand you got a bar. This is a cooler bar. Right? Nobody necessarily cares that you got 38 big screens. The square footage of the bar. The hours of operation. But you show this, people are in, people are ready to go. Way better picture that tells your story, that tells what your brand is. Same thing, you don't need to tell people that you have a bar. You don't need to tell people your hours of operation. They'll figure it out. But when you show people, hey, with their drink, them having fun at some part of your club, that matches your brand identity, that matches your statement, you're going to get people interested. More food stories, right? Again, you could show the picture of the chicken, you could show the picture of the fish, or we can show people smiling and dining together. All right, let's, uh, let's keep digging deeper here. Let's talk about a case study, right? Some of us have photo galleries on our website. Some of us have um, just pictures of the club or detailed pictures. So this is Disneyland. You can see it says park overview. You can look at the link on the top. It's Disneyland's website. The total pictures in this, they were 26 total pictures in kind of this gallery. Of the 26 pictures, 21 had people and five were pictures without people. Right, so you can tell where the focus is, right? It's on the storytelling, it's on the stories, relations, and magic, it's on what matches their identity. This is a club I actually worked at. 
this was uh who knows how many years ago but man I, when i worked at the time i was like hey what great pictures we have and you can see on the top it says click on each of the thumbnails to enjoy a photographic tour through our enchanting club ground there were 69 total pictures there zero with people zero pictures with people right disneyland's got at least 80% that have pictures, we have zero. Nobody cares about empty dining rooms, or it's just not what people wanna see, right? Picture of a facility of just a pool, you can have those, but you gotta have people in them or things that match your brand and your identity of who you are. Okay, let's talk about another case study here that I'm calling it. Hey, this is uh, the new Star Wars land. And I'm going to look at, hey, the photos used by different sources. So I've just pulled different pictures. It's a picture of the same land, but a different photo. And what's the story being told in each photo? Okay, so this is a picture used in a news story. And hey, it wasn't a high res picture, so it's a little blurry. But a picture used in the San Francisco gate. about Star Wars, the galaxy's edge, right? What's the story being told? Hey, here it is, and there's people waiting to see it. That's probably the story that I take out of that. There's the structure, there's people waiting to see it. This is a picture used in a news story from CNN. And I ask the same question, what's the story that's being told here? To me, it's like, okay, it's there and it's open. Take a look at it. Same thing. Orange County Register. What's the story being told? Looks to me, it just says, hey, there it is. So as we think about these three pictures from news sources, right, what's the story that's being told in the picture? Let's move to Disneyland. Same land. Disney.com, what's the story being told? Hey, it's a family going in it together. It's a family going in on something new. It's a family embarking on checking out something new together. More pictures on Disney, right? What's the story being told? Hey, a dad and a child excited to go, ready to go check it out. How about this photo, right? Very similar to the Orange County Register photo, the picture of the building. But now it's a photo of a young child pulling the dad in to say, hey, let's go check it out. And then again, friends walking together, smiling. There's a big difference in just, hey, what the story is being told in each photo. All right, let's talk about dining photos again. Again, I said, I don't think people care about empty dining rooms. Everybody's got an empty dining room. What is it that matches your brand, your identity, your product position statement, right? What would be better for your club? Picture A, the empty dining room, or picture B, people smiling and having fun together, right? What is this picture telling you? We have a dining room. Everybody's got one. Hey, what's this picture telling you? Hey, we have a dining room, we have full, we have people that are smiling. If you look at the waiter, he's dressed up. He's got the, <clears throat> the napkin cloth over his left arm. He says, hey, there's formal dining, right? There's a, the story tells, or the picture tells so much of what can happen, right? You can see there's lobster, there's bread on the table, right? There's wine, there's red wine, there's white wine. 
we have an empty dining room, we set the table. So I'd ask, hey, which one's better for your club? What's the better story, A or B? How about a clubhouse photo, right? Which would be better for your club? Which one tells the story that matches your brand? Picture A. We're at the clubhouse. Or what if you had something like picture B? Because that picture could be taken on the 18th green of that clubhouse. And you can get more story being told than just look at our building. So if you had your choice, right, which one would you rather have? How about a bar photo, which is better for your club, right? If you had a picture of your bar, picture A, empty bar, it's nice. Or hey, picture B. And we talked about this one already, but I think there's a story being told that matches who you are. How about a pool photo? All right, if you've got a pool at your club, which one tells the better story, right? Which one matches your brand? Which one matches what you want to be, right? Picture A, pool. Right? I know this is a stretch of the picture because nobody's got a picture of people having fun smiling at their pool. But it's, hey, around the water feature, right? What if you had these people? around that way different story to be told golf shop photos which one's better a or b man this happens this is every golf shop in america right hey here it is this is our golf shop or hey right what if you had this right what's in if you had people shopping in your golf shop Right? What if you had people looking interested, right? You have a mom with two children holding hands together. What parent doesn't want that? That matches, hey, their brand. That matches their identity. And then in the background, you've got, hey, another, um, what appears, what I would say is a mom and a child interested in something, right? There's people smiling. There's people interested. There's activity versus Every golf shop is saying, here it is, right? We, right, show pictures of a golf shop that says, hey, we carry these brands, right? We carry TaylorMade. Hey, we carry Nike. We carry Travis Matthew. We carry Adidas. Everybody can say that, right? They can get that on Amazon, right? They can get that online. But, hey, what's the story you're trying to tell? Right. Do you have pictures in it? Do you have or do you have people in your pictures and what is it telling? The meeting room, right? You do you have a photo of a meeting room at your club. Again, I said nobody wants to see empty dining rooms. I don't know if anybody wants to see empty meeting rooms. Right? Which one tells a better story? Right, the empty dining room, or hey, people dressed up, formal wear of saying, hey, this is possible. Hey, people cheersing and having fun. Again, notice, hey, the different drinks. Notice the food that's out there. There's a story being told. Right, here's a picture that is on Disney's website. Clearly they show that, hey, they can do meetings. There's a much different story being told than that. Everybody has that. Everybody can put that picture down. But hey, can you make your meetings fun? Can you make your meetings engaging? Can you get people in? All right, let's talk. keep talking about individual case studies the use of what I call the statements, right? Your mission statement, your brand statement. Right, we're talking a lot about, hey, your product positioning statement, who you are, knowing your identity, knowing what your brand is. So comparison statements, right? Which would be better for your club?
right? Again, we went to Walt Disney's statement. The mission of the Walt Disney Company is to inform and, and inform and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling, reflecting iconic brands, creative minds, and innovative technologies that make ours the world's premier entertainment company. Or hey, what about this club? Blank is a private country club formed to enhance the lives of members and their families. The club is committed to providing quality dining, golf, and other recreational services and facilities that meet the needs of its member families and their guests. What is that brand? What is its identity? Right? That's, I don't know if there could be one that's much worse. It just doesn't say anything. It doesn't say who they are. We're going to enhance the lives of its members through other recreational services. That's every club could say that. It doesn't give you anything that's unique about them. Let's go to another one. Provides a premier experience for our members, their families, and guests by offering a friendly, welcoming, personalized service and inspired full service amenities. We offer a world class golf experience along with fitness, swimming, tennis, dining service complemented by engaging social events that pro promote a quality lifestyle for the enrichment and enjoyment of the diverse group of people we serve. Everybody can say that. It doesn't say anything unique. That's every club that's out there. Another one has a proud heritage and tradition as a private family-oriented country club committed to providing exceptional service, outstanding golf, recreation, and social experiences in a friendly and welcoming environment. That's so generic. It doesn't give you anything specific. It doesn't talk about what the brand is. It doesn't talk about what your identity is. How do you know who you are? How does your customer know what their experience should be? How are you able to be focused with a generic statement like that? And as we're talking about statements and we keep talking about pictures and the storytelling, and that, hey, marketing is anything that creates interest. What do these photos tell about a club or the brand? Right? This is like Disneyland. These are pictures of people smiling at a club. More pictures of people smiling at a club. Hey, that's, that's why people join a club, right? There's a lifestyle that goes with it. And that's something that, hey, everybody wants versus, hey, we have a terrace, we have chairs, we have a bar, and our terrace overlooks the golf course and is 3,000 square feet. This tells all that. This gets an emotional piece to it. I love this picture from a club. Right? What parent isn't going to jump all over that? What family isn't going to jump all over that? And I don't mean to use the term jump, no pun was intended, but right, kids up in the air, having fun, all taking photos together and doing something together. Again, same thing, people smiling, people outside on a terrace, that's the lifestyle that people want. Another picture that says, hey, we have a dining room that's open four days a week with fine dining. Tennis pictures. Tons of clubs have pictures of tennis courts, empty tennis courts. Hey, we have 16 courts. We have 12 courts. We have USDA fast courts. Whatever it is, that's the story. Right. You can say we got tennis, but hey, this picture does it a lot better. This is going to create far more interest than an empty tennis court. More people around the tennis court, right? You can show an empty tennis court, and this picture shows an empty tennis court, but it shows people hanging out and being social. And socialization and happiness are far more powerful tools to show 
than empty facilities, empty dining rooms, empty tennis courts. Dining, people having fun, people smiling. Kids, yeah, hey, just tell the story again. People hanging out, hanging out at night. There's a vibe there. There's something special. There's something different. There's something unique. There's something that is specific to what that club is. Right? You can tell people, hey, we have events. We do parties. We've got space to do your events. Or you show people. You say you're a family club, do you show it? Or do you show that, hey, you're a family club and everybody's hanging around and everybody's having fun? Right, this tells the story, it doesn't just show the empty dining room. Right, we talk about the product statement, what's your brand, what's your identity? Right, hey, are you a formal club? Are you a relaxed club? Are you fun? Are you young? Are you old? Whatever it may be, picture tells the story. Ladies playing golf, that's awesome in today's world, right? Because, hey, this is not a world where decisions are being made solely by, you know, the male, right? We've probably all known that, experienced that, read the studies. It's got to be inclusive and welcoming to everybody. Another story here, right? People hanging out, people playing golf, tournaments, right? You don't have to say, we have tournaments, we have a men's club, we have a ladies club. You can show it. And there's a lot that can be taken from this photo. Hey, are you a place with good players? You can show people that are, hey, good players with good golf swings. Hey, sometimes you can have a photo without people that can still tell a story or describe your brand. Not everything has to have people in it, but it has to match what your identity is. And like I say, you can totally have pictures without people in it. Right? Disneyland had 26 photos. 21 of them had people in it. So not everything has to have a photo, but does your photo tell something more about the story? Right, so hey, if your photo, if your thing is about course conditions, then great, you can tell a story that says, hey, you have great course conditions, right? You can tell the story that just says, hey, this is relaxed, this is cool, this is a place to hang. No people, but hey, there's some kind of story that just says, hey, it's cool around there. Specific study, some of the clubs that I've been involved with, right, where we try to go to this product positioning statement. Monterey Country Club, John and I worked on this one together, right? We went from 260 golf members to 527. And I think they got even more, and that's two and a half years later, creating a clear statement and creating a clear product positioning statement, right? A sense of community like no other in the desert. The desert has 120 golf courses. There's one on every stoplight. But hey, there's something unique that they're doing, something that is special to them. Oregon Golf Club, right? They said, hey, they're going to be the best course in Oregon with a club full of friends and a relaxed culture, right? That was their product positioning statement. And hey, they went from everybody saying, why is the club not full? To having 108 more members and a year and a half later being full. You look at that photo, that's a pretty good looking golf hole in a pretty good setting. They couldn't get the club full. Then also they became very clear on who they are, right? Seacliff, we just said, hey, we're going to be a lifestyle club to relax coastal community full of friends. There's a 17 month waiting list to join now and three years later. So again, hey, the purpose of all of this is to say, hey, know 
have a product positioning statement, know who your brand is, know what your story is. Because if you go back to Disneyland, they have a very clear brand, a very clear identity that matches their marketing strategy and it goes together. And there's so many things that we do that are photos of empty dining rooms, a empty tennis courts, the same old golf picture and the same generic statement about what their mission is. But find out what makes you unique, find out what makes you special and make that part of your brand, make that part of your mission and everything that you do have it tell a story that creates interest around your brand. So with that, John, I will take questions and hope I didn't uh, go too fast and or too slow for anybody. No, I mean, I, I, a wealth of information, Robin. I think the underlying theme is, is, uh, is people, uh, buying people. Why do you think so many clubs uh, miss that and overload on the facility aspect of their property versus the club or the uh, the community aspect of it. Why do why do so many of us miss the boat? Um, I think it's because it's what we've always done. You know, we've always done. I think clubs clubs as a whole are probably the last thing to change. And I say that because right, this is mini clubs are run by boards that are run by seventy five year old white male white men with white hair that don't like it when things change and I like what was. And I get it, I don't like it when my Yahoo feed changes, my Google homepage changes, um, but we are the last ones to change. And when you think about dress codes in the world, everywhere has become more relaxed, whether it's planes, churches, restaurants, but yet we still have people that want the dress code, the old dress code. Um, but it's just, hey, it's what we've always done and we haven't really um, looked at it from a different lens. Who else do you think is in the same league or a similar league uh, in terms of getting this uh, with Disneyland? Are we talking, is, I'm sorry, I don't know if you know the answer, but is this businesses or is this other clubs? Uh, no, businesses, other clubs, anybody that uh, in your opinion is, is, is doing it uh, like Disneyland is doing it. Um, well, hey, the first thing hey, you have to know exactly clearly who your brand, um, who your identity is. Um, I would say, and there are not very many of them do. So in all, you know, fairness and honesty, right, if you go to all of the business schools programs, right, they're using the textbook stuff rather than, hey, what's the real world application? So, hey, and, and what do I think that are people that do it? very well um off the top of my head nike does it very very well um i think zappos shoes does it pretty darn well um a lot of hotel companies four seasons does it um very well so those are just a couple ones off top of uh, top of my head In terms of uh, Seacliff uh, in particular, um, what are some of the uh, marketing strategies that you use to promote Seacliff? Well, we always say hey, that we're, you know, we're, we're not your grandfather's club. So we put that out very upfront um, and say, hey, if you're looking for formal and stuffy, that's not us. Um, and if you want formal and stuffy, then Hey, that it's it's just not going to be a good fit. So everything that we do is around that relaxed vibe, that relaxed culture. Um, and you know, we put you know a lot of clubs have pictures of you know what I call kind of the 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 old dead past presidents, and we don't have that. We took down our board pictures. We put pictures of members uh, having fun around the club which sets a tone for the club i had an old board president who took a picture we took the pictures down and he wasn't thrilled with it and then a year later he's like that's the best thing you ever did was put pictures of people having fun up because it sets a tone it sets a vibe and it really creates a, a great story 
And hey, if you look at our social media, everything is there's a story behind it. There's no nothing's a you know, a poster that says, Hey, come to you know, whatever wine event or come to X event. It's just pictures of people having fun. And that's just hey, ripped off kind of from from the Disney type of thing. It's interesting that you said that the uh, the pictures of the, the the past presidents or the dead presidents or the past boards. So many clubs just you know hallways and hallways lined with you know photos of people that nobody knows um, that doesn't really say anything about who that club is today. Uh, and I think uh, you know a, a lot of clubs make that mistake. Um, not really a question, but it seems like this mentality uh, could be very effective in building a resume, uh, an individual resume as well. What other things besides uh, the uh, promoting the club through the website or photos around the club, what's another way or medium that uh, to get this message of people having fun across to potential members for you? Um, so I think when you're talking about potential members, if you go back to um, stories, relations, and magic, right? It's got to be tied behind that. So sometimes there can be a story that's told, you know, while you're walking people around. Um, and I would say, you know, if sales is solving a problem, a person's problem need or want, nobody should ever give the same exact tour with the same exact kind of locations of where you're going around. Um, that hey, it should be specific to that person's problem, needs, or wants. Um, just the story that, hey, I told the other day um, is that we have a, um, you know, we have chairs in our lobby lounge area, and on the back of them, the one there's a very, very small plaque uh, that says Murph's chair on it. And we basically got, you know, like it's, the size of a, a nameplate you put on a locker and it says Murph's chair very very low on the bottom behind it and just told this story of hey we have a member whose wife when she gets done playing golf goes in the ladies locker room comes out 30 minutes later and he's always there so patiently waiting and he would do this day after day week after week and we joked around that it should be Murph's chair because last name is Murphy and then, you know, if, if him keep sitting in the same chair all the time, we put a little plaque on it that just says Murph's chair, that he is the only one that knows and where the chair is situated. There's a window behind it. So he'll go outside and make sure that he's sitting in the one of two chairs that says Murph's chair. So there's a story that goes with it. Um, so we have to figure out how to tell stories. Hey, in the dining room, hey, this is where, you know, the Mersing family of 10 comes every single Wednesday. And all of their family comes here for pasta and go through that story. Kind of a technical question. Um, putting photos up all over the club of all these different members and maybe potentially guests of members. Uh, how do you go about getting the consent of all of those people? And in many situations, you may not even know who some of them are in the photos. Do you have to get consent of every single person in the photo before you put it up? Uh, we do have photo consent forms that, that members sign. Um, but you'll you'll find out that hey once you start putting photos up people want to see their picture up so um, people are uh, you know we we hire uh, you know for our events we hire a, a you know a professional photographer and generally it's you know a, a, a you know a, I don't want to say a wedding photographer but some kind of event photographer that comes on Thursday or Friday nights when they don't have their main business going. And when people see them, they get excited because they want to see their picture on, on the wall. Fantastic. Uh, Robin, thank you very, very much for putting this together. I mean, it opened my eyes. I'm getting comments here on the question board. Uh, just uh, very enlightening because it's, it's, uh, it, it seems so simple, but uh, it, it's so commonly overlooked. Thank you very, very much for putting the the presentation together today and for educating the section. For everybody on the Catalyst uh, webinar this morning, um, many of you know by now, but uh, we are no longer uh, requiring the quiz for the uh, members that are on the live Catalyst uh, web presentation. 
Um, we do uh, create a quiz and put it on the uh, uh, SCPGA um, website for people that want to go back and view catalysts from a prior date and get the MSR credit. Uh, there is a uh, quiz requirement for that, but if you are on the live catalyst uh, broadcast, um, you get the one MSR credit automatically. Thank you everybody for being here today. Want to uh, remind everybody that we are doing the Catalyst webinar weekly now, uh, every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Next week we have Michael Lemus, uh, PGA, uh, CCM, CCE, heavily decorated uh, and well-educated, uh, experienced general manager in the field, talking about uh, his presentation is going to be shaping your personal future characteristics and traits of successful leadership. So that's Michael G. Lemus that's going to be joining us um, next Thursday on The Catalyst. Robin, once again, thank you very much. Also, everybody, the week after next, which is Thursday, June 11th, kind of an unprecedented catalyst for us. It's going to be a District 11 catalyst. So we're going to be doing it at 11 o'clock in the morning that day because we have the Aloha section, as many of you know, uh, District 11 is comprised of the Aloha section, the Southern California section, and the Northern California section. Uh, we are doing a District 11 Catalyst webinar uh, with Jeff Price from the PGA of America uh, talking about uh, PGA.coach. So uh, many of you know Jeff Price. He is our uh, uh, chief commercial officer. Nobody knows uh, the uh, implementation of PGA.coach better than Jeff. And so uh, the three uh, sections in District 11 are coming together uh, to do a, uh, uh, a unified um, Catalyst webinar promoting PGA.coach. And I know, um, you know we, uh, we as a section and we as uh, an association have a long way to go in terms of all of us getting certified uh, on PGA.coach uh, to, to help promote that uh, that ADM. But uh, um, next week, Michael Lemus, the week after that, uh, 11 a.m. on June 11th for the District 11 Catalyst on PGA.coach with Jeff Price. Once again, Robin Shelton, thank you very, very much for being here this morning. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay sane.